this character broke an entire Smash game. Here's why. This is one of the few characters in the top 7 that remained good even after the transition to Brawl to Smash 4. This character was even an exception to that, as he was even better than before. Smash 4 was seen as a game that was defined by DLC characters, ran by characters with insane ladder combos, rage being at its peak, and no, I mean the mechanic, not the plenty of rage compilations up for its time. Whether you like the game or not, it's hard not to notice how interesting Smash 4 was as a competitive game. It almost felt like a fever dream. Some of the drama that existed during this game's lifespan was crazy. As once Smash Ultimate came out, people ended up ditching Smash 4 for a new, fleshed out game. While Bayonetta could use her own video entirely, however, there were actually characters before Bayonetta that broke the meta during their eras. Here's our story today, none other than Diddy Kong. Now I'm sure you're wondering, why is Diddy Kong seen this way in Smash 4? Well, it's none other than this moment right here. And no, your eyes aren't deceiving you, that's Hungrybox, one of the best melee players of all time. And I'm sure you know who he is. He's getting hit by one of the most iconic combos for this game's history for the first time ever. Who? Ha. Now I know what you're thinking. This combo existed during the launch of Smash 4. However, this moment right here gave the combo its identity. It put a name on Diddy Kong's best KO confirm in the game. Now what's going on here? Why does this work? What is the hoo-ha? And no, it's not that. Nice Telling, try. Uh, Manny to stop screaming hoo-ha. I got mad at Manny for saying hoo-ha every time Diddy Kong down throw up air somebody. Now, hoo-ha existed since the game's launch, as Diddy Kong was figured out pretty early on. Even top melee players like Leffen and Armada were showing how good this character was straight out the gate, and they barely even played Smash 4. Why does hoo-ha work? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Hoo-ha is Diddy Kong's down throw and up air combo. Sometimes up throw into up air depending on the character's weight. Diddy Kong will make a noise during the throw, being the hoo, and then the next move it will be, you get the point. This essentially is Diddy Kong's classic up throw up air combo. And throw combos are a huge part of Smash 4's meta. If your character is a good character in Smash 4, I'm sure one of the reasons why this is the case is you have a throw combo. Look at Smash 4 Mario. Up till, up till, up air, up air, up B. Zero Suit Samus. Up air, up air, up B. And these changes made them incredibly good characters. Diddy Kong was so good because his throws were, whether it's down throw or up air, are super good at setting up into his notorious up air. And up air is a move that defined Diddy Kong and made him such a menace to deal with. Up air comes out extremely quick, it has little end lag, and high amounts of knockback that made this combo possible. This is different from up throw up air that you would see in Melee, for example. As Melee's engine, it's easier to SDI and DI out of combos, while in Smash 4, they made it so DI is only half as useful as it used to be, meaning escaping out of Diddy Kong's up throw up air is harder than, let's say, DIing out of Fox's up throw up air. Escaping combos in Smash 4 is only half as effective as it would be in any other game, so yeah, throw combos are gonna be on deck baby. This is such a huge change between melee and smash 4 as it changes the defensive game a lot. In fact things like launch speed influencing became more of a factor. Another big reason was the change to this. Here's dreamland in melee and Yoshi story in melee. These stages are well known for having extremely large blast zones and extremely small blast zones. Well if I told you in smash 4 they decided to make pretty much every stage in the game like dreamland with how wide these blast zones are, except one big change, a really low ceiling. Now how does this affect the game? Well just like Dreamland and Melee, that means KOs are going to take longer to confirm and characters are just generally going to live longer. But if you add a low ceiling blast zone on top of this, this means characters are going to go for more vertical KOs, horizontal KO options are going to be less effective because vertical KO options are going to favor the lower ceiling now. Which is why things like Corrin's down B counter was so busted when it initially released because it's sent directly upward and it had a huge knockback multiplier. This is why Bayonetta thrived with her busted vertical combo confirms and this is also why the hoo-ha existed. Because Diddy Kong's throws were consistent and up air had a lot of knockback leading to people dying as early as 90% depending on the character's weight and if there was rage. Oh yeah and the mechanic? The icy on the cake is if a character gets above 100% they will start to use smash for its rage mechanic which would increase knockback over time time, the more the percent built. But this led to people trying to hold their rage as long as possible in order to kill early with it. In fact, you could even use rage for the following stock and try to double dip with your rage in a way.
We could honestly make a whole video on this, but it was way too rewarding in Smash 4 and it got nerfed in Smash Ultimate. And you might be thinking, at least Diddy Kong was a bad character outside of this throw confirm. Yeah, no, if only that was true. Diddy Kong was so good, he won multiple large tournaments over and over and over again. He was the front runner of Smash 4's early meta, and right behind him was Sheik, which I actually might do a full video on Smash 4 Sheik on Metafy. Comment below if you want to see that. Here's Diddy Kong's banana. Banana is a trap tool that allows somebody to trip if they slip over the banana. The reason a tool like this is so good is it forces you to go around the banana or try to react to it. If you try to jump over the banana, you're going to get hit by Diddy Kong's incredible aerials. If you try to roll past it, you can get grab punished by Diddy Kong. It's one of the best tools for controlling the stage in Diddy Kong's favor. And this is the Smash 4 version of the move, which is actually nerfed from the Brawl version when he had two bananas. And it's still very good. You can punish shields with Diddy Kong's side B. It will grab shielded opponents, which is an incredible mix-up tool, even having strong smash attacks like forward smash, which is Diddy Kong's strongest attack with low amounts of end lag. In a nutshell, Diddy Kong had every Everything you could ask for. A busted combo game, strong KO power, amazing throws, tilts, projectiles, a banana, especially the banana part. Only having small weaknesses like lackluster damage output, but when you have consistent bread and butter KO throws, those things don't really matter as much in Smash 4, right? Diddy Kong had it all. Winning plenty of official Nintendo tournaments with even Sakurai watching. Watching Diddy Kong destroy his game. Alright, let's be real though, we know the inevitable was coming. It was obvious that Diddy Kong was really good. It was at a point where you couldn't not notice his strengths. And his evolution at this point forward would actually be really interesting. Patches 1.06 and 1.08 seemed like death blows to the character. Forward smash was nerfed, monkey flip was nerfed, up throw and down throw nerfed, even up air receiving back to back nerfs in each update, ultimately making the move into a stronger combo move instead of being Diddy Kong's go to KO option. But this surprisingly didn't kill the character's viability. The hoo ha is still possible, but now the combo is used for lower percent juggling follow-ups. Sure, he has less KO potential, but people began to develop Diddy Kong's potential with his neutral game and banana follow-ups instead of spamming the same combo. While for a while, Diddy Kong dropped to 9th place on Smash 4's first tier list. Yes, they didn't do an official tier list until some of the DLC came out, but as time went on, Diddy Kong still held their own, almost having a metamorphosis becoming a demon in the neutral instead of a hoo-ha character. In fact, Diddy Kong was still seen as the best best in the game as the meta matured, as he was still placing high in tournaments even when the character was nerfed, showing that he still had a lot of potential. This is really rare by the way in competitive Smash, as nerfs can sometimes be a death blow to a character. That's not the case with Diddy Kong, as simply people adapted to his new playstyle and the more underrated aspects of his moveset. In fact, even after the release of Bayonetta where Diddy Kong would only drop to being tied with Cloud at second, and you know who else was at first, despite Diddy Kong being not as dominant as he was at launch, Launch, he still ended up being one of Smash 4's best characters in the whole lifespan of the game. Thank you guys for watching the video. There's early content available on Patreon, and if you guys want some unreleased content that is not on the channel, check it out. There's some videos on Metafy. There's some videos where I break down Smash Ultimate's meta, and, and at some point there'll be a video where I talk about the flaws of Little Mac.